Yeah, so I took a bit of a break from doing videos. Not intentionally. Uh, as I was editing this video, my software kept giving me a ton of errors. So I just kind of gave up for about a month and forgot about all of the errors. Then I came back and remembered, oh yeah, that's why I stopped working on this. But I persevered and here we are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dixie and these projects are a bit newer than what I normally do, but they're still vintage. Every year we take family photos and I like to wear a dress that I've made and also make something for my daughter to wear. So several months ago, my friend Laura gifted me some patterns, including these vintage 1970s dresses, which just so happened to be pretty close to our sizes. I bought this floral fabric first from a local shop, I'll link everything down below, and I thought it'd be perfect for my daughter's dress. So then I had to find something that would coordinate for my dress. I bought two iCat cottons from an online store in India, going for this fall color scheme. And since I mostly sewed these dresses while my kid was in school and I kept forgetting to take her measurements, I began with my dress. These older patterns only come in one size per envelope. Luckily, this one matched my bust size, but I knew from experience that I'd need to widen the dress at the hips, so I left some extra room on the sides when cutting it out. I also suspected the sleeves would be too narrow, and I was right, so I did a little trick to widen the upper sleeve while also lowering the top of the sleeve just a smidge because this sleeve cap was quite tall making for an extra poofy sleeve, which I didn't necessarily want. Some poof is nice, but not too much. I started first on the bib feature in my contrasting yellow fabric. I'm a little worried that this fabric's gonna be too soft for the bib. I think I wanna add some interfacing to it, uh, even though the pattern doesn't call for any. This knit interfacing adds the slightest amount of stability, but it absolutely disintegrates if you touch it with a hot iron, so I always have to adhere it with the fashion fabric face up. So I've sewn the two bib front pieces together at the bottom. One thing I am going to do, though, is understitch the seam allowance so the uh, edge won't roll over. So if you look closely, <laughs> As it is now, you can kind of see it coming this way. I want to make sure it always rolls towards the back so I don't see the seam line. Understitching like stay stitching is one of those steps that seems superfluous enough that you can skip it without any real consequences, but in my experience, it absolutely makes a difference to the final product. Next, I attach the back portion of the bib and the ties on either side. The bib is made of two layers that have to be sewn together in a special order because it mostly sits on top of the dress. It's not exactly like a facing, rather it hangs free in the front. I used my handy dandy tube turner tool, which is just a tiny sharp hook on a long metal stick to pull the ties right side out. Then I put the bib aside to cut out the main dress fabric. The body of the dress is just three long pieces. All of the waist shaping comes from the ties on the bib. Unfortunately, I run into a problem. Here's my sleeve. This is all the fabric I have left. And I have a little bit of an overlap that won't fit. I really do want the full length sleeve. And this length here is just exactly the length of my arm plus seam allowances. So I don't want to shorten that. I think I'm going to have to shorten the sleeve cap. Luckily, this sleeve cap is quite tall, even though I flattened it out earlier. It is a very, very tall, pointy sleeve cap. So I went about shortening the top of my sleeve even more. Again, not a big deal. There's plenty of extra room here, and that just gave me enough space to cut out the sleeve. But I didn't have enough room to fold up a sleeve hem. Instead, I cut a small facing to fit and sewed that onto the sleeve hem instead. So it's coming together, but this dress is supposed to have a zipper closure in the back. I don't have a zipper that would fit right now, but I'm kind of wondering, this neckline is so big. 
could I just sew it up the back and pull it over my head? I'm going to baste it together and see if I can. I used my serger to finish all the raw edges and back to the sleeves. Oops, I forgot to sew this little elbow dart in the sleeves. Oh well, not gonna go fix it now and I doubt it will make much difference to the fit. I gathered up the sleeve caps and attached those and then I moved on to hemming an obscenely wide amount of fabric. This hem is like four whole inches wide, folded twice to make a two inch deep hem. Had I known how long the skirt was going to be, I'd have cut it shorter and then I would have had enough fabric left over to make an unaltered sleeve. Ugh. I just put my daughter to bed so I'm gonna try to speak quietly. Um, I'm going to put the bib on to the neckline next. And one thing I did earlier was stay stitch this neckline, meaning I stitched with a basting stitch right along where the seam line is, just so this won't stretch out because this is slightly at an angle, it's slightly on the bias. So it would stretch pretty harshly if I don't stabilize it. Now comes attaching the bib, which the pattern instructs to pin on the wrong side of the dress and, and flip it to the outside. This makes the inside of the neckline nice and smooth. Don't forget to clip those corners and curves so they can lay flat. And lastly, the bib gets top stitched partially around the neckline just to keep it from flopping around. All right, with that dress done, now I need to start working on my daughter's dress. I did measure her, but it seems like she's gonna be just a smidge too skinny for this size four. So I think I'm gonna have to figure out a way to make the whole thing a little bit narrower. Although the length will probably work out okay. This pattern was already cut out and I started slimming down the main body pieces. I knew I needed to reduce the overall size by two inches around. So since this is one half of the back yoke, this piece needed to be narrowed by one half inch. For the body pieces, I just folded out a slice vertically up to the shoulder. And I'm doing this a little haphazardly, so please don't see this as a sizing tutorial. I can cut some corners since this is for a kid and I'm not removing that much volume. In a proper method, you'd remove width from specified points around the body. So here I'm just kind of squishing the pieces together. The pockets and placket are unchanged, so I can just cut those out as is, but I want to wait on cutting out the sleeve because I need to remeasure my daughter to see if the sleeve will fit. Okay, I know it's hard to see, but I did stitch the pocket, and I even did a little stabilization triangle at the points. One thing I'm noticing, unfortunately, in these last two projects is that I think my sewing machine is due for a, a little maintenance cleaning or something because the stitches I'm getting are a little bit wonky. Mainly my tension is off, bobbin thread is being pulled to the top a little bit too much even if I keep my tension really low. So I think after this dress, I'm gonna take it in to get it uh, looked at. And then over here on the neckline, it wanted me to stabilize this point. And I just went ahead and stay stitched the whole, the whole neck. <laughs> Here I clipped the space for the button placket to be inserted. And next I marked the pin tucks along the chest with chalk. Then I interface the placket using a thicker non-woven fusible interfacing, not the same product I used for my dress. I knew I needed something more substantial to support the buttons. These two placket pieces get sewn on either side of the center neck opening.
And I like to hand sew the bottom of the placket just because that area can get bulky and it makes for a neat finish. After that, I made the little box pleat at the back of the dress and added the back yoke, which also attaches to the front shoulders. And now we move on to the sleeves, since I finally managed to wrangle my daughter long enough to measure her arms. I had to shorten the sleeve by about an inch and a half, so I just folded up the sleeve piece. At no time did I permanently alter any of these pieces. The bottom edge gets gathered into a cuff, which I also interfaced. And I hand sewed the inside of the cuff since it looks nice and these are so tiny that it didn't take too long to do. As much as I love this cute little necktie detail, I just know in reality that thing is never going to stay tied and it's just going to flop around and get in the way everywhere for my daughter. So I'm just not going to do that one. I'm going to go with the normal Peter Pan collar. The collar and collar stand also get some interfacing for support. And I just love these cute little structured collars like these on kids clothes. I actually don't get to make too many clothes for my daughter because between birthdays and holidays, she gets a lot of clothes as gifts. So the clothes I do get to make for her are really special. And she even got to help make this dress. We used my handy button gauge to mark buttonholes and sewed those by machine. She likes to feel the little lever go up and down. We used pins as a barrier to safely open the buttonholes. But then she got bored when it was time to mark the buttons. These are some vintage shake buttons I found at an antique mall, which I also used on a dress I made for myself. I thought the gold and coral would make a nice contrast for the floral fabric. The fabric on this dress is beautiful and the bib front makes for a slightly higher than natural waistline which is a detail that I love. The sleeves are puffy but not obnoxiously so and while I do like the finished dress, I think I'm going to shorten the sleeves. At least to three quarter length. I love the look of the long sleeves but this fabric is so lightweight that the dress feels more summery than the fall style I was going for. Shorter sleeves would make it more wearable for warm weather. To be honest though, at the last minute, I decided to wear a different dress to take family photos. The visual combo of the two printed dresses read too cluttered for me, so I went with a solid colored dress instead. It's actually my own design, which you can buy and make yourself. As for my daughter's dress, it's so cute. It fits her well and she loves the pockets where she can collect little rocks that she found. The details like the pin tucks can get a little lost in the busy print, but like most things, they're easier to see in real life. The collar is sweet and the buttons really pop against the fabric. And best of all, she likes it. Thank you so much for watching. It's not often that I get to make real life wardrobe clothes these days. Uh, next time we'll be back with more costuming though. I am currently in the middle of my 1770 sack back gown but that's such a big project that it'll be coming to you in multiple videos, so stay tuned for that. And until then, happy sewing. <laughs>